Okay, so I over explain things. But what I like to do is give people the why. I feel like if you don't have the why, then you don't have the foundation of what you're doing. So why is it harder to pour into to-go cups? In latte art, there's a rule. I talk about this in almost every single video. When you get close to the surface of the coffee with your spout of the pitcher and you let the milk pour out, you're gonna get crisper lines. You're gonna get more bold white instead of that beige color that you can get when you're kind of a bit too high from the surface or no color like we do when we integrate at the beginning when all the milk sinks. This is why you see latte artists tilt their cup. You're tilting the cup so that you can touch the surface sooner. When you have a rounded cup, you can start as soon as you want, pretty much. So you're going to tilt that cup and then as soon as the liquid comes to that edge when you're tilted, you should be good to go. In making coffee and in latte art, we are adding milk and foam to espresso. That is all we're doing. And if we add too much foam, well then the espresso is gonna feel stiff when we pour into it because foam is stiff, right? The more milk we add, the more foam we're adding. So if you have a larger container or if you fill up your cup a lot more, well then you're gonna have stiffer foam, meaning you're gonna have to pour a bit heavier to get any kind of effect to happen. The opposite is also true. If you only integrate a little bit, you have less foam in the cup at that point, meaning that your base or whatever pour you're doing will likely slide a lot easier. So let's say you had two cups, you have a really large latte and you have a pretty normal cappuccino sized cup. Same amount of espresso in each. In a latte, when you tilt that cup and you start integrating, you're gonna have to add more milk because it's a lot more milk overall and you need to add more until it gets to that lip of the cup when you can start pouring. That's why it's slightly harder to pour in larger lattes. And this seems counterintuitive. A lot of people think, oh, but I have so much room, it's gonna be easier to pour. Well, yes, if you wanna pour something simple like a heart, you have a lot of time and a lot of space to do it. But if you want something more intricate, then you really wanna get in there sooner so that those lines can glide away from you and you can start wrapping in brown into the white. This is why a lot of people in competitions use smaller cups. They can one, start their design sooner, but two, the design fills the cup a lot better and they're using a lot less foam to do it. Latte art is essentially a 2D image. The finished product is on top of the drink and it is flat, but we tilt it in the beginning so we can get more layers in there. And as you tilt it, the shape of the cup may change on you. This happens more in to-go cups than it does in regular cafe cups. Let's take these glasses, for example. I have a cylindrical glass and I have a circular glass. Regular cafe cups like this are mostly round, meaning when you tilt them, it's gonna be round all the way until you're done tilting. Whereas with a cylindrical cup, if we tilt that cup early, well, then we're gonna have a shape of an oval for our main pouring area. And then as we keep pouring, it's going to condense back into that circle and our design is not gonna look right. So we have to mix a lot more milk into our to-go cup until we get to that point where there's a circle in the cup when we're pouring into it that will continue to stay a circle as we add milk. Starting later in the cup causes two problems. We have less space for more intricate designs and we're also filling the cup up with a lot more milk and foam, meaning you have to pour a little bit heavier. So you wanna start as soon as you can with a to-go cup as soon as that base is no longer in the shape of an oval, that's when you're gonna start pouring. And you're gonna pour either a little bit heavier or you're gonna do that drifting base that I showed you in this video. Drifting bases work really well because you can go to the back and you can come back to the middle and you're creating that current. And you can start this before it gets to the point where it creates that circle. So you can premix, 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 and then start to go to the back and then land as you're coming into the spot where you're ready to start pouring. This will save you just a little bit of space a little bit tricky, but with practice, you can do it. Lastly, you're gonna wanna pour heavier. You have more foam and milk in that cup. Now I'm not saying pour as heavy as you can, but you are gonna need to put a little bit more of a tilt into all the designs you're doing. But other than that, it's essentially the same thing. It's just always gonna be more challenging to pour into a to-go cup if what you're trying to do is a complex design. If you're trying to do stacks, trying to do hearts, maybe even an advanced rosetta or something, you can still do it. It's just gonna give you the runaround if you try to do something too complex. Okay, now just for fun, I wanna show you guys how to pour into a to-go cup using a to-go cup. We're gonna need to make a couple modifications to an already used to-go cup. Okay, we need to preface something. Do not start taking to-go cups off your cafe's shelves. To-go cups are very expensive. Please do not take this as an invitation to make more waste and waste the perfectly good to-go cup. But if for instance, someone dropped the to-go cup and you're no longer able to use it, hmm, 
Well, now that's fair game. It's gonna get tossed anyway. Or if you have a machine at home and you have an extra to-go cup that you were using earlier when you were walking around with some coffee, this can also be fun. And again, always recycle. So we're gonna take our to-go cup, we're gonna pop that lid, and then we're gonna take the sleeve off, and you're gonna look for this little line right here. This line, we're gonna pinch it just a little bit. If you see this bump right here, we're gonna cut that bump off, but we're gonna do it at an angle because we don't really need the bump from the back of it cut off. We just need the bump for the spout. You could just shape this into the shape of a spout and you could call it done, but if you cut off this lip, you're gonna get a much better result. So we're just gonna cut, keep cutting, till it looks like that, right? Then what you're gonna do is you are going to push in these two corners right here and pinch it, pinch it flat right there. Then you're gonna push it back in like this. Now I know that looks a little weird, but it's okay because we're gonna fix this corner right now. So if you happen to pinch asymmetrically like I did, that's okay because it's paper. So we will just pinch a little deeper right here. Looking pretty, uh, pretty, pretty gross, pretty terrible at the moment, but that's okay. We're gonna stretch out these sides just a little bit and then we're gonna use our finger pulling back on this part right here just like this, very gently. If you do this too aggressively, it will tear, so don't do that. Now, this is gonna be unstable as it is, so we're gonna create kind of a handle for it. Take your sleeve and then cut a triangle into the sleeve, just like this, right? And pop that off. And now, this sleeve is gonna go right here and that's gonna hold it into the shape. So what I recommend is that you steam in a normal pitcher. You don't have to. You could steam in this for sure, but it'll work better if you steam in another pitcher and then transfer into this. And then pretty much it works the same as a pitcher, except that it's as light as a feather. That's all I got for you today, you guys. Thank you for coming along again. If you enjoyed this and I gave you some value in your life, maybe consider the thanks button or maybe just consider leaving a comment, liking, a sub, you know the spiel. Did I miss something in this video? Wanna see something specific? If any of that's true, please comment below. Let me know what videos you would like to see. I love hearing back from you guys. That's pretty much it for me. Have a good one. Cheers.